And this one might be my favorite, which is the Yugi Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Mythic Legion's Phobos action figure horse from the Alithia Wave. So initially, I was not going to order Phobos, which is, seems weird for me, who has essentially what's become a Mythic Legion's YouTube channel. But back in late 2020, when I was planning this order, I was kind of on the fence about how many horses I wanted and how deep I could go, mostly because of space. And at the time, I don't think I had, uh, I don't think I had Balius in hand yet or any of the horses in hand yet. They hadn't been released. This was just the pre-order prior to those releasing. And um, I didn't know how much I was going to love them. <laughs> so uh, after the fact, after, you know, months later was when I realized I wanted to go all in with the horses. And my original plan was going to be, oh, I'll just pick this up at Legion's Con. But now my, my main order, my very large order has not yet shipped. I'm still kind of waiting for it to ship. And I was like, I, I need to get a figure in hand. Like I need to do some more reviews. I need to get these things in my hands. And so I just ordered one I didn't have. And that was the horse Phobos. I also don't have Decembalus or Varg yet secured, but I did get to review Varg because my good friend Trevor lent me that figure. And so that's why I have that review up. So yeah, the majority of my wave is incoming. We'll see that hopefully soon. And I'll get more and more reviews up as I open them up. But for now, we have Phobos the horse. Very cool looking evil horse. If you have Balius, you know what you're getting into with this thing. It is nearly all the same parts as Balius, except for the head and a couple little decorations. The head sculpt is new, or at least it's partially new in that it's a very, very similar sculpt to the Equidron figures. But yeah, I'm really loving this figure. I like all the horses. I'm kind of all in on all the mounts now. So anyway, let's get into this review. Here's a quick look at the packaging with the wonderful Alithia specific art by Nate Barch. And of course you can see the other horsemen on here. We have Poxus, Erethir, and then the upcoming Necronominus, which should be the wave going up in November. On the right side of the box, we have a painting of Phobos, and then we have the little card art down there with no bio. On the website, it just say the bio coming soon. And then on the back, we have that same artwork with the other figures in the wave, the other sort of horse-like figures, I guess. So we have the centaur, the moose, and then the two-pack over here. Two-pack was only available directly from the pre-order from Four Horsemen. And then on the left side, we have the Moose of Farius. And apologies on that last bit, I said of Farius, which is actually the centaur, and I meant Alder, which is the name of the Moose. Anyways, here's a close-up of the head sculpt. What you can see here is a removable face piece, um, harness type thing that has that, that, that skeletal piece, and then it has the wings on there, the vampire wings, and then the harness and the, uh, the reins that come off of there. Purple mane with a wash is the same mane as Balius. And then we have the brown leather parts here. The neck collar piece is new, or at least it's a modified, I think like this part shares parts with Balius. And then we have this decorative decorative piece on the front here, this sort of bird-like creature with bat wings. A lot of the same saddle parts as Balius, just in a different colorway. And going down into the figure, I love these horses. Like if you get in there close, you can really see the sculpt work. You know how a horse has very short hair. You can kind of see that hair sculpted in there. And then over here is the uh, the legs taper down into a purple color for that vampire theme. We have black hooves. And then there are some modular pieces, like you can remove the stirrup. You can also remove this sort of protective leather piece over here. You could put the stirrup back on without it, and then you kind of have the setup that Balius has. So lots of different options there. Little loops and things for swords and shields. I will say this did not come with an accessory like the other horses. They came with swords for the figures. The bedroll in the back actually is removable like the other horses, but this time I feel like they kind of corrected things. There's a little bit more of a mushroom peg there and I feel like it just pops in more secure. One of the issues with Balius is that this piece can fall out very easily. So I feel like that was a purposeful correction. And then you can see the purple on the tail that really just kind of completes the look of that vampire horse with the purple accents. And the horse itself is not a vampire, I don't think, because vampire is more of a race. It's not like a thing in mythos. It's not like you turn someone into a vampire, I don't think. It's more of like a specific race. Aside from the blood armor, I don't think there's any turning of people. And so it wouldn't turn a horse into a vampire. It's more like an undead horse. And for comparisons, here are the two other horses. On the left, we have Aethon. On the right, we have Balius. And then next up, 
to compare some figures riding the horse. Here is a 2.0 Mythic Legions figure. This is the Vampire Knight. I think it looks great. The horse is big. These horses are very large. I think they scale okay, but they are on the bigger side. Here's how it looks with a 1.0 figure. This is a Barbarian. Here it is with Nosferatu. I think the first person I saw do this with the other version of Nosferatu was Boba Chuck on Instagram. Get a load of his stuff. His picture of his, his uh, Symphony of Horror Nosferatu on Phobos is, is really incredible. Good stuff. But this one looks all right on it as well. Nosferatu is a rather tall Mezco figure, so it fits pretty good on here. Speaking of the large size of these horses, here's a look at it with a large figure on there. And this is the Axe Battler from Storm Collectibles Golden Axe line. And even this really large figure looks okay on there. Like it's not too out of scale. If you want to bump this up into the Storm Collectibles size, I think it kind of works at least on some figures. And then this one might be my favorite, which is the movie realization Darth Vader with his purple accents, I think just look awesome on this horse. It's just a really cool one. And I think size wise, it fits pretty well. And since this horse does not come with any extra accessories, I thought I would just, instead of doing accessories, I would kind of strip it down. And then we can kind of take a look at the little different parts it comes with. And here's a close up of the head sculpt without the harness piece on there. And I just wanted to show the Equidron head. And it is, I believe it's the same head, but the Equidron head has these other parts like glued on there, like this side piece and then this top. Because I think those are separate parts and that's glued on. So I think it's the same sculpt with added bits. And then you can see the harness piece that slides right over the head. And then attached with loops, it has the reins. And then here's the neck, the collar piece. And again, a look at the saddle off. When I take the saddle off, I like to take a leg off and then straighten that other back leg and then slide it off. Just makes it easier. And I'll just leave this stuff off as I do articulation. So the head is on a pegged in ball joint. And then it has this like little just gap closer piece right here. And that pegs straight into the back of the head. And that gives a nice, nice wide range of motion. You couple that with the ball joint in the neck and you can see like this thing moves quite a bit up and down. It can look down, it can look up, it can come over to the side a little bit too. So a lot of good range of motion in the neck and stuff. The legs are mostly like this hinge with a swivel piece underneath. So each point of articulation on the leg kind of has that type of movement. You got the same thing over here. So you can do like a horsey kind of pose over there and straighten it back out. Even the hooves come back and they twist as well. The back legs, the hips, so to speak, do have a ball joint. So they actually have outward motion and they have swivel as well. Same kind of swivel over here, sort of at the thigh area, twist as well. And then the leg kicks back a little bit and kicks forward quite a bit. Same type of hoof articulation in the back legs. Finally, the tail is on a peg and on a hinge. So you can swivel that up and down and it holds a pose pretty well and it could come out to the side and so on. Anyway, thanks for watching my review. Last thoughts is this is a very specific character. If you're looking for a generic horse to just put a guy on, this is not it. I would hold out for Boreas because Balius is kind of hard to find now. Boreas you can get if you pre-order from a retailer. But, um, but otherwise, you know, like as this character, Phobos, I really hope they do a bio for him soon because I'm very curious to see what this guy's all about. But until then, thanks for watching my video and may the force be with you.